a moment that we had never felt before mm -hmm. in the arena. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. It was game really seven. Electric. Said we we ran out there yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> like we were twelve Literally, because we've like, been waiting for it just <laughs> as much as the fans have been waiting for it. Come on, baby, here we go. This is a nice setup, wow. Where do I sit? I sit like this? Ooh. Game seven, 116-89. The Toronto Raptors, for the first time in franchise history, will advance to the Eastern Conference Finals to take on the Cleveland Cavaliers. It was so important to the growth of the franchise because had they been bounced in the first round again, you know, Masai's blowing it up, the goodwill that you've built with the Kyle DeMar, Dwayne Core, you know, it would have just been another one of those periods where the Raptors were okay, but like historically it meant nothing. Oh, well, it took seven games. Oh, well, it, you know, they couldn't polish them off early. Man, just win. It's not supposed to be easy in sports period, certainly in the playoffs. I wasn't concerned about the fact that, you know, they, they had to go to seven against Indiana. They won. Well, as a Raptors fan, you're used to tragedy. Um, <laughs> you're used to heartbreak. And so it just seems so surreal whenever you get past that next hump, you know what I mean? And I remember that Miami series was like a dogfight. That series was just insane. I think the halftime shot from Kyle happened in there. Jonas Valanciunas went down with an injury. Like, there were so many things that play in that series that kind of give, gave you a little bit of doubt with this group. But with every bit of doubt, there was a response. Nobody had won by double figures until Miami wins game six. And Miami wins it pretty convincingly. And now you're coming back home and all of those memories are coming back, right? Brooklyn 2014, you were up 3-2, couldn't finish on the road, came home, lose game seven at home. Like you're, you're fighting everybody's negative perceptions and, and why you can't win. For me, I think the biggest opponent the Toronto Raptors had was the inferiority complex that both the fans and the media had about them. And I, I think whenever something went left, people had the ready built of excuse of, okay, we're the Raptors, not, they're not, it's not supposed to work out for us. I think that game was huge for, for two guys, for Kyle and DeMar, because people had always been saying that they can't do it. They're not good enough to take Toronto over the top. Kyle was tremendous. You know, DeMar was spectacular. Both of them, you know, they, I think they scored 63, 65 points between the two of them. The kind of overwhelming sense in the locker room after and talking to DeMar and talking to Kyle was just this relief. You know, there was so much scrutiny on them and there was so much pressure on them and you knew they were good enough to get to that point, they deserved it. And, but they just seem to have gotten in their own way so many times. And so to be able to kind of come through in a game seven, to go to the uh, conference finals, they knew they were a better team, they showed up and did it. That era of Raptors basketball, you associated and connected with them way more than you did, I think, with the Vince ones, because Vince felt larger than life in a lot of ways, right? Vince and those Raptors felt larger than life because he could go anywhere in the world and be the most famous guy. and that. It's so crazy for an athlete in Toronto, but Kyle and Damar felt like they were taking you along the ride with them. And um, it was a special era that I think helped grow this city's reputation in the league as one that not only can, can bring in some talent, but allow them to grow and grow within each other as well. We've worked so hard and to um, come and beat a very good team in the Miami Heat to go to the Eastern Conference Finals was definitely just a feeling that uh, we were moving in the right, right direction. I thought the fact that in the biggest game of all, to that point, that they blew out the heat. That was, that was the moment. That was we're on the scene. It's not just 50 plus wins. It's not just, oh, they're only a regular season team. They knocked off Miami. They took care of D Wade. They did it, you know, emphatically on their home floor in a game seven. And then you have that game seven where Kyle put up 35 points in that game. A dominant performance you know, by Kyle. And Bismack Biombo, you know, Biz was off the charts. Biz was, he was outstanding. I think he was 16 and 17. Dunks, blocking shots, running the floor, taking energy from the crowd and giving it back to them with his play. The, the city, I think, has always 
gotten behind the energy guys a lot. Like JYD was a huge fan favorite. Matt Bonner was a huge fan favorite. Uh, they like the underdog story. And, and Beyond was not an underdog story in the traditional sense, but he was a bench energy guy that like his previous team had given up on and no one really knew a lot about when he got here. And I think as much as the rebounds and the shot blocks and the flexing on the court and stuff, he was quietly a really big leader in that locker room. It's gratifying for me um, watching these guys every single day put the work in. It, it, it's just good all the way around. I'm happy for Bismack for his career and his future. And um, that's what it's all about is putting these guys in positions to succeed and then taking that opportunity and uh, maximizing it. You know, I wouldn't say we came out of nowhere, but I don't think people expected us to be in that position. You know, so I think uh, we kind of put together this magical run. After 20 years, it took de two decades to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. And wh what's the term I'm looking for? Promised land type of material? You know, to be able to get that far to the point where we are down to the final four now, was a really awesome accomplishment, a really exciting accomplishment. A moment that we had never felt before mm -hmm. in the arena, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. It was Game really seven, I yeah. said we, we ran out there. Yeah, we <laughs> like we were 12. Literally, because like... we've been waiting for it just as much as the fans have been waiting for it, right? right. It was un something untouchable and, and they finally touched it. And I walked out of the arena and literally I had two fans just walk up to me and, and just hug me and they were crying. They said, I've been following this thing since the year one in Sky Dome. And this is like my greatest moment as a Raptor fan that, you know, we're going to the Eastern Conference Finals. And oh, by the way, yeah, you're gonna take on LeBron James and the Cavaliers. And after the first couple of games, everybody's like, okay, it's over. And then you come back home and you push it to six. And then to me, there was within all of that, something that happened that I thought changed the league's perspective, NBA fans' perspective of how special Toronto is. Do you hear this? I do. They're do you incredible. Hear this? Unbelievable respect and much respect to these fans, to this country. This is unbelievable. I've never been a part of something like this in my 13-year career. Uh, this is special and uh, they really appreciate what their team did. I think for the fan base that had been growing and getting a good reputation as a great fan base over the couple years before, that conference finals moment where LeBron has to stop because the crowd is so loud cheering for the Raptors after they've been eliminated, I think that was such a beautiful snapshot of like what the Raptors fan base is and what this team means to the city.